Okay, this is E3050, week 10, lecture 2. Unfortunately, in lecture, my tablet crashed, and I'm basically re-recording the lecture. But the good news is, most of the writing is already there, so let's get started. First of all, today we're going to do two problems, which is pro problem 74 and problem 75 from chapter 4 on, on page 226 from the book. So this should serve as an excellent review for your final exam. Excuse me, speaking about your final exam, your final will have four problems. Problem number one will be, given a step response, find the transfer function. We already solved such a problem last lecture. Problems two and three will be related to problem 74 and 75, which we're going to do today. And problem four will be a conversion from transfer function to state space. Calculators are okay, but no cheat sheets. And whatever relevant data, for example, the motor transfer function, first and second order parameters, such, such as settling time, will be given. Now also, today in lecture, I returned your exam twos and your final homeworks. The only point to note, the main point to note in exam two is that if you are given RPMs, that's not the SI unit of angular velocity, it's radians per second. We discussed last lecture how to convert um, the RPMs to radians per second. So anyway, uh, so that's about it. Uh, let's start with the problem. Here is problem 74. So basically what you have is this uh, system of gears, I mean a gear train with uh, inertia, uh, rotational, uh, torsional spring, rotational damper, etc. For the system above, we need to find N1 over N2, the gear ratio such that the settling time is 16 seconds for a step input torque over here. J1 and J2 is given the inertia, the uh, rotational dampening and the torsional spring constant. So what we have to do, the solution is obviously to find the transfer function theta over t, and the expression for it is 1 over s squared jeq plus sdeq plus keq. Now this jeq, deq, and keq will be in terms of uh, your uh, j1 and n1 over n2 squared, for example. So basically, writing the expressions for jeq, deq, and keq, so in other words, I reflect all these impedances onto this shaft, the input shaft. And notice that the settling time is given, so that's equal to 4 over zeta omega n, assuming our transfer function is of the standard second order form. So anyway, plugging these values of jeq, deq, and keq into this equation, well, first, we can actually find what jeq, deq, keq, keq are, and there it is. So substituting into our transfer function expression, this is what we get. Now, what we're going to do is for simplicity, we want to find n1 over n2. So we're going to let n1 over n2 be alpha. Therefore, equation 1 implies that theta bar over t bar is 1 over s squared times 1 plus alpha squared plus s alpha squared plus alpha squared. Since we have to get this expression into this form, uh, what we will do is we'll factor out a 1 over alpha squared and multiply and divide by alpha squared. So basically what you're going to get is 1 over alpha squared alpha squared over 1 plus alpha squared s squared plus s alpha squared over 1 plus alpha squared plus alpha squared over 1 plus alpha squared. Therefore, Our omega, the, so if we, we can even rewrite this as so 2 times 1 half that times s plus alpha squared over 1 plus alpha squared. Therefore, zeta omega n is going to be 1 half alpha squared over 1 plus alpha squared. This implies, and zeta omega n scrolling back up, our settling time is 16 seconds. So zeta omega n is a quarter. So this implies that uh, this is equal. Uh, this implies that alpha squared over one plus alpha squared is one half. Therefore, you can just, you don't even have to like do any arithmetic in the sense you can see that alpha has to be 1 for this to be true. Therefore, 
n1 over n2 is simply 1. And that's your final answer. Now, for the second problem, before I started recording the lecture, I already cut and pasted from my electronic version of the book uh, the question. So here it is. Instead of me drawing a very bad diagram like I drew on the board today, here's the question. So this is basically you want to find the mass here and the spring constant here so that we have this displacement to yield a 10% overshoot and 15 seconds settling time for a step input on the motor torque TM. Now I want to point out a short, a very nice discussion that took place in lecture courtesy of a question asked by Chris Lemke that notice that they have not given us the input voltage of the motor. So out of all these parameters, turns out that these are not relevant, okay? And if you, can th if you think about it, if I'm given a step input voltage to the motor, then this transfer function, the output shaft displacement, let's call this theta m to input voltage would have already been a second order transfer function. So eventually you would have gotten a fourth order transfer function. So anyway, instead they gave us a step input torque and that's, so we really don't need these. But let's see how to solve this problem. So we need to get the transfer function from T to X. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect all the impedances onto this shaft. Let's call this theta L. Let's call this TL. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to write the system equations on the theta L shaft. So I'm going to go into the S domain. So basically, you're going to get S squared, the equivalent impedance, uh, I mean, sorry, the equivalent inertia, yeah, so plus SDEQ, that is the equivalent impedance, plus KEQ times theta bar L of S equals the in the torque on this axis, TL bar of S, but not only does uh, the rotational system oppose whatever torque is applied here, so does this translational system, and to figure that out, if you look at, a, if you look at this J here, so when there is a displacement x bar like this, there is a torque produced so that way, t rotational, if you will. And here is the radius r. It's fixed. So basically, you're going to get r cross f. So I should draw this as a, in the sense, this displacement, the angle between x and r is 90 degrees. So the torque is r cross um, f and here is our f so this is basically going to be f bar of s times r equals tl bar of s but from the uh, we'll shortly write out what the expression is for j e q uh, etc but we know that from the translational system, so translational mechanical system, that you, we have S squared M plus SFV times the displacement equals the applied force. Therefore, we can eliminate the applied force. So let's just be, let's call this F of T. Um, no, we have two and two. This is one. Let me save this. So substituting two in one helps us eliminate. Um, so two in one implies we can eliminate F. We have S squared J E Q plus S D E Q plus K E Q times theta bar theta L bar of S plus s squared m plus sfv times x bar of s times r equals tl of s uh, let's see we have a step input torque so what else we got to do uh, we need to eliminate theta l so let's do that in the sense we know that theta is r over x so let's take that oh uh, 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 uh. yeah theta is l by r therefore we basically get s square 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, in other words, wait a minute. So here is the displacement. I mean, that's the radius r. There's our theta. So that's our x. So theta equals r over x. Yep, that's right. It's, it's sorry. <laughs> Therefore, what we get is, uh, let's see. So before we do this, let me take a short break. Uh, how much time do we have? I need to get some water. I'll be right. Continuing. So before we continue, wait a minute. This bothers me. Theta. Oh, never mind. Theta equals the arc length over the radius. So I inverted this because the reason why it bothered me is you can't get x in the denominator. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's x over r. There you go. Okay, so continuing. Uh, now I feel much better. Therefore, we get s squared j e q plus s d q. I remember also in class I didn't make that mistake, thank God. x over r plus s squared m plus s f v times x of s over r. And we just need to eliminate the torque. And we know that tau m theta m equals tau l theta l. So by conservation of uh, rotational energy, so torque L is basically our input torque times it's going to be N2 over N1. And we can quickly check this in the sense we know that N, N2 is, for example, bigger than N1, right, in this case. So that means the torque on this shaft is going to be greater than the torque on the input on the motor shaft by a factor of 2. And that makes sense. This is a larger gear. So this is correct. That is, it's N2 over N1 and not N1 over N2. So the good news is we are done with our expression setup. X bar of M over Tm of S is what? It's going to be N2 over N1 time over S squared JEQ plus SDEQ plus KEQ over R plus SFV times R. Okay. Uh, so it's looking good. So let's start uh, substituting everything. That is JEQ. Remember, reflecting everything onto this load shaft. So it's going to be JA plus N2 over, JA times N2 over N1 squared plus J. It's also going to, so. DEQ is going to be DA times N2 over N1 squared. KEQ is just going to be K. And this is just an ideal gear besides this inertia, 1 is to 1, right? So JEQ is going to be JA times N2 over N1 squared uh, plus J. DEQ is going to be DA times n2 over n1 squared, keq is simply k, uh, and we know the value of fv, and we know n2 over n1 is 2. Therefore, 3 implies that x over tm, our transfer function is, and we notice that the transfer function is second order, which is good. So there's going to be 2 over, uh, let's see, R is also 2, I believe. So let's see. R is 2. Uh, this is all unity. So we have to find K. This is also unity magnitude. All right. So let's just plug everything in. So what we get here is S squared times. Uh, so this is unity. That's 4. So that's a 5 plus S times 4 plus K over 2 plus s squared m plus s times 2. So if you multiply and divide by 2, you get 4 over 5 s squared. Let's see. s squared uh, 5 plus s4 plus k plus 4 times s squared m plus s. So what we finally get is 4 over, uh, let's 
see. 5 plus 4m is squared plus 5s plus 5s plus k. So to get this in standard form, we basically for, for make it a monic polynomial in the denominator. plus 4m and we also multiply and divide by uh, so we factor out of 4 if we multiply and divide by k so basically we can write this as 4 over k times k plus 5 over 4m therefore we have zeta omega n our usual uh, trick if you will that is wait a minute 4s what did I do this is 8s because I solved this problem in class. So it's 4s plus, let's see, yeah, 4s plus 4, which is 8s. So I remember this number was very nice. The synthesis 8s. So then zeta omega n, so it's 2 times uh, 4, zeta omega n is 5 plus 4m. And omega n is equal to the square root of k over 5 plus 4m. Since the settling time is given, we can first use the Ts to find, uh, so zeta omega n is basically Ts over, oh, it's, it's uh, settling, ah, settling time is 4 over zeta omega n. So zeta omega n is, settling time is 4 over zeta omega n. This is 4 over Ts. There it is. This implies that 4 over 5 plus 4m is equal to, what is the settling time? 15 seconds. Uh, is equal to 4 over, yeah, 4 over 5 plus 4m equals 4 over 15 seconds. This implies 15 equals 5 plus 4m, which implies m equals 10 over 4, which is 2.5 kilograms. That wasn't too bad. Therefore, Omega n is equal to square root of k over 10. Uh, let's see. We can, from this, uh, 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 we know now the percent overshoot is 10, which implies e to the minus zeta pi over square root of 1 minus zeta squared is 0.1. So we can solve this for zeta. Just wondering, without finding zeta, can we find k? It doesn't look like it. So zeta equals, if you'll, well, let me put my calculator here and then just solve this. Let's see now. So anyway, so zeta gets, gives me Seconds, yeah, looks good. Huh. So for 10% overshoot, zeta is 
Therefore, omega n is 4 over Ts times zeta. This which implies omega n is approximately, I think I should just be able to do this on my calculator here. So it's going to be, I think it's 0 0.5912 uh, times, settling times 15, take the reciprocal of that and multiply it by 4, you get omega n as uh, 0 0.451 radians per second. Therefore, k is omega n squared times 10, that it implies k is approximately, uh, so you, let's see, you square this, uh, and then, Point four five one times point four five one. I really don't know. Yeah, this is correct. Omega n squared times ten. So k is approximately uh, two point zero three newton per meter. So there you have it. The solution to this um, problem, to these two problems. So what I'll do as the follow-up video, like I promised, I'll post a video showing you how to use MATLAB, and we'll check some of these answers. Okay. So that is. I will actually, uh, not this, but I'll show you how to check the percent overshoot, etc. in MATLAB. We'll go from there. All right, so actually, for the next lecture, for the, the next lecture is going to be 20 minutes of course survey. So please bring your laptops. We are going to do an online course survey, uh, course survey using Class Climate. But for the first 20 minutes of the last lecture in this course, we will preview uh, 3720. And yeah, that's about it. See you next lecture.